Hello, for today's video lecture we're going to be talking about the basics of forces. So a force is any influence that would cause a body to accelerate, uh, in isolation at least. Uh, so this is going to be anything that we would call a push or a pull on an object. Um, so here we've got an example of a man, uh, he's both pushing and pulling, so we're exerting forces, there's many forces at play moving this object around. Um, so each force uh, has three distinguishing characteristics, and that's what we're going to focus on for today. So we're going to talk about the magnitude, the direction, and the point of application of a force. All right, so for the magnitude, the magnitude of a force can be thought of as the strength of the force. Um, and larger magnitudes tend to cause larger accelerations uh, in objects or for any given object. Um, so the units of a force apply to the magnitude. Uh, so this is generally going to be a mass times a distance over a time squared. Um, and so in metric, uh, that would be a newton, which is a kilogram meter per second squared. Uh, and in the US customary system, that's going to be a pound, which is a slug foot per second squared. And so the larger the magnitude of the force, the stronger the force is going to be. Next up, we're going to talk about direction. So forces have a direction as indicated by a vector. Uh, so when we add or subtract vectors, just like we do for any type of vector, we need to take both the magnitude and direction into account. Um, and vector quantities are going to be represented by an arrow, uh, sometimes with the magnitude and angles labeled. So over here, we've got an example. Uh, so F equals 600 newtons. That's the magnitude and the direction of that arrow. Uh, is the direction of my force. Uh, and in equations, uh, these vector quantities are represented as a variable with an arrow over the top of them, uh, often with subscripts used to distinguish one force from another. So I might say this is F push. Uh, the little arrow over top of the F indicates this is a vector. And push is, this is the pushing force in this case, rather as opposed to something like gravity uh, or normal forces. All right, so last thing we want to talk about is point of application. Uh, so we can model forces as either having a single point of application or being distributed over some area or volume. Um, so this is the important distinct, distinction at this point. Um, so point forces, we're going to assume, have a single point of application. Uh, and our mod modeled as a single vector. Uh, so something like the tension in a cable, it's a pretty concentrated force. We'd model that as a point force. A distributed force, on the other hand, is going to have a point of application that's not really a point at all. It's going to be distributed over a line, a surface, or a volume, and we're going to model those as a field of vectors. Uh, so something like the water pressure on the bottom of a tank, so if it's 60 pounds per square inch, that pressure is an example of a distributed force. And this is how it would look uh, in our models. We'd have a, uh, an array. Uh, or a um, field of vectors here. All right, so some common types of forces. We'll get more into this with the free body diagrams, but some things that you're going to see fairly often, uh, pushing or pulling forces. So anything that is just kind of a direct force, uh, a person pushing on it or a person pulling on some object. Uh, we're going to see gravity forces. So anything that's going to be on the surface of Earth is going to have gravity pulling down on it. We're going to have normal or reaction forces. Uh, so these are two names for the same thing. Uh, so a normal force uh, is anything that any force that prevents two bodies from occupying the same space at the same time. So gravity is pulling you down, uh, but the normal forces from the floor are kind of counteracting that and pushing you back up. Uh, anything in a uh, constraint, so we think about something like the hinge on a door, those are also normal forces. The normal forces of the hinges are holding that door in place um, and reacting to whatever other forces are around. So normal and reaction forces, another option. Finally, we have friction forces. So this is what's going to uh, generally oppose two bodies sliding relative to one another. Um, and we're going to talk about that as well. Uh, and then finally, we've got tension in cables, ropes, or chains, uh, anything that is going to kind of carry a pulling force, uh, some, some kind of flexible object is going to carry a pulling force in the direction of the cable. 
All right, so we'll talk more about those later on. Uh, that's all I've got for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.